down far from the sea, there was a young boy called Magnus. And Magnus was a wizard. Everyone knew he was a wizard because his grandfather was a wizard, and his grandfather's grandfather, and his grandfather's grandfather before that. It always skipped a generation. The Magnus had proved his wizarding skills early on by coming up with one spell. And he loved to get all his friends down to the creek behind his parents' house to do that spell. He'd take a little leaf and drop it in the creek and say, be a boat. And that little leaf would grow a prow and a stern, sometimes a sail or rows of oars, but it was always a boat. And then he would say the next magic word, wind. And a wind would come up and blow that little boat around and around in circles in the creek until he said the final word, waves. And then that patch of creek would become a wild ocean and toss the boat up and down, back and forth, and all the way out to sea. It was a very good spell, everyone agreed. But even Magnus had to admit that a real wizard should probably know more than one. And so his older cousin Nico came to teach Magnus magic. And Nico stayed with Magnus and his parents and he taught Magnus all kinds of useful spells for cleaning the house and carrying water and making things grow. But the more Nico stayed in the town, the more something strange seemed to happen to everyone else. People stopped talking to each other. They stopped looking at each other. Even Magnus's own parents just sat at either ends of the house, staring out the window and sighing. So one day, when Nico was giving yet another magic lesson, Magnus finally said, you know, like, I'm glad you come, and, and this is all very useful, but you're not giving me what I need to know. And what's that? asked Nico. Well, said Magnus, haven't you noted how everyone's getting all sad and depressed and stuff, and shouldn't magic be the way to fix that? And Nico started to laugh. He said, it's true that there's something I haven't taught you. But the secret is this. Magic doesn't come from nowhere. Some wizards get their power by doing good deeds, and others by going mad in the desert. And I get my power from breaking hearts. I'll show you. And out the window just then, they could see one of the girls from the dairy walking by, swinging her buckets, singing along, enjoying the day. And in that moment, Nico showed Magnus the word and the gesture for breaking hearts. And in that instant, her shoulders slumped. She went silent, she sloped along. And Nico turned to Magnus, so thrilled to have finally revealed his great secret, and Magnus found himself getting very tall, and very cold, and very still, and he said, magic is a terrible thing, and I want no part of it. And he left. He left the house. He left the street. He left the town. He went as far as he'd ever gone before, to the edge of the forest. And there was an old, run-down farmhouse there that no one used anymore, and Magnus decided that there he would live, and he would farm, and he would not use magic. Now the place was a mess. All kinds of things had blown in and grown in over the years. And as Magnus swept and scrubbed and scraped, he kept thinking of all those little spells that would just have the place clean in an instant, but he wouldn't use them. His only bucket had a hole in the bottom, and so he had to go down to the creek and fill it up and then rush back up the path. And if he went too fast, then it would slop out the top, and if it went too slow, it would drain out the bottom. And so he went up and down, sloughing and draining until the spells that would have the water carry itself, but he wouldn't use them. Magic is a dreadful thing, I want no part in all of this, I need to find a better place to try and get things straight. I'll stand the floor on bended knee, I'll plant the corn and grow from seed, if only I could find a way to mend those hearts that ache found a barrel of parched corn in the barn, and he planted it, and then he waited, and then he waited, and then he waited some more. And just when he started to think maybe he should use magic, he didn't need to. Those little corn shoots went popping out of the ground, and they grew. And they were the only thing that grew in the town that whole summer, because the rest of the town was broken-hearted, and without love, nothing can grow. 
But Magnus's corn it grew so tall and so wide and so thick that the field itself was a dense mass. There was no way through it to pick the corn. The only way to harvest would be to wait until that moment when all the corn was ripe and then tear out the stalks as he worked his way inward. And the day came and Magnus to put a basket over his shoulder and he went to pick the first ear of corn. And as he did, a little wind came up and the corn stalks shuffled aside. Suddenly there was just enough room for Magnus to take one step forward and reach more corn. And then they opened again and led him further in, around and around the whole field, until he came to the very center. And there in the middle of the cornfield was a small pool of water. And Magnus was so thirsty, he'd been picking corn all day, he leaned down to get a drink, and as he did, a leaf from his basket dropped into the pool, and without even thinking, Magnus said, Be a boat! Be a boat and spread your that was it, he'd done magic. But it was too late, he couldn't leave the spell half done, for there it was, a little leaf boat with a sail and a little cabin, waiting for him to say the next magic word. Wind. And that wind came up and blew the boat around in circles in the pond. And as it circled the pond, the pond grew bigger. And as the pond grew bigger, the boat grew bigger, until it was big enough for Magnus to step inside. And something called him to do that just before he said the final word, waves. And then suddenly the cornfield opened up, the pool became a river and took him all the way out to sea. Magnus had never been to sea before. The ocean was terrifying. It was full of strange creatures and wild weather, but the corn spoke to him and it told him they would come back with what they needed for the town. And so on they sailed until they bumped up against a mountain with a great black peak. And this, said the corn, is the mountain of sleep and sleep is a good cure for a broken heart. So leave me here and gather stones from the mountain of sleep to take back to the town. And so Magnus emptied his basket and he began to climb the mountain. And as he got near the top, he heard a voice. There was someone up there already. Someone who sounded an awful lot like his cousin Nico. Magnus peered over the edge of the mountain and there was a strange figure lying on top of it with tangled wild hair and torn clothes saying, Woe is me and what have I done and what will I do now? And it looked an awful lot like Nico. Magnus ducked back down, but it was too late. Nico had seen him, scrambled over the edge. Magnus, what are you doing here? It's the broken hearts, said Nico. They haunt my dreams. I've come here to the ends of the earth, to the mountain of sleep, and even here I can get no rest until I undo what I've done. But I don't know how. But you do. That's why you're here. Let me help you. Let me fix this. Now the last thing Magnus wanted was help from Nico. But the stones were heavy, and he had good manners, and Nico was family. Okay, he said. You can help me gather stones. I can do that, said Nico. I'm the best stone gatherer there ever was. And he filled his shirt so full of rocks that they burst through. And then he filled his arms full of rocks. And Magnus did too. And together they slid back down the mountain and sailed all the way home. Just in time for the Midsummer Festival. Every year the town would get their first harvest and they'd bring it into the town square and they'd have a huge bonfire and they'd feast and they'd laugh and they'd dance. But this year, there was no harvest so no festival. So Magnus and Nico made the bonfire themselves, and they surrounded that bonfire with the stones from the mountain of sleep, and then they filled it with the corn from Magnus's field, and the corn cooked on the stones, and the smell of it began to waft through the town. And one by one, sad, pale, hungry faces appeared in windows, and then doorways, and then the edge of the square, and Magnus welcomed them all to eat. 
and eating turned to laughing and laughing to talking and talking to singing and singing to dancing and soon it was the same festival it always was and then almost in one moment everyone fell asleep right there in the square and as they slept the corn mended their hearts for good food with good friends can do that too and as they slept Nico took the boat and sailed far away in search of a new source of magic. And as they slept, Magnus walked from farm to farm, field to field, and garden to garden, whispering little spells into the ground, for there was still time to ask the plants to grow. Spread. 